वेलकम वेलकम टू दिस सेशन ऑन फ्लोरिंग मैट्रिक आई एम डॉक्टर अहमद नवाज खान फ्रॉम स्कूल ऑफ फार्मेसी ग्राफिक यूनिवर्सिटी इन द प्रीवियस सेशन वी विल लर्न दैट ऑन एब्सॉर्बन अंडर द अल्ट्रा वायलेट एंड विजिबल रीजन एट अ पर्टिकुलर वेवलेट देर इज एन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक ट्रांजेशन अकर्स फ्रॉम द ग्राउंड स्टेट to excited state so when a molecule it is excited by absorbing the radiation from ground level to excited level and then when it come back from the excited level or the high energy level to the ground level then it lose some of the excess of the energy so this emitted energy is as of in the form of radiation so this excess of energy is known as the fluorescence so now today we are going to discuss this fluorescence and the process or the study for determining the the fluorescence is known as the fluorimetry so this fluorimetry basically it is the molecular emission spectroscopy like the molecular absorption spectroscopy like ultraviolet or visible spectroscopy which is based on absorption this spectroscopy that is the fluorimetry is the molecular emission spectroscopy and it is used for measurement of the emission from the excited atoms it can be atoms of element or it can be atoms of a molecule which is there in sample as in uv visible spectroscopy there is a light source so here also there is a radiation source that is the electromagnetic radiation source that excite the atom present in the element or the molecule so this phenomena actually it is the phenomena in which the molecule of the element present in the sample solution it absorb the radiation of a specific wavelength at the ground state level which is having the low energy level and then it get excited towards a excited state or which is uh, having the high energy level now at the excited state the molecule actually it is unstable so it is start emit the radiation but it's not emit the radiation as such as you can see in the picture that the exciting light is there on the normal molecule and it get excited on exciting when it come back towards the ground level it the it is converted into heat that is 80% of the heat comes up out of it and only the 20% of the emission of light occurs and this emission of light actually it is the photoluminescence so this molecular spec emission spectroscopy is about the luminescence and this luminescence is of two types is of basically three kinds one is the fluorescence second is phosphorescence and third one is the chemiluminescence these fluorescence and phosphorescence they comes under the photo luminescence and chemical luminescence in the second so as i said that at the excited level or the higher level the molecule get unstable and that's why it is start emitting the radiation some of the it is used as uh, comes out of as a heat and some 20% of come out as a as a emission so this emitted radiation they are estimated from the excited molecule which is there in the sample after the absorption of the radiation of a specific wavelength and this wavelength is known as the excitation wavelength so this measurement of the emitted radiation is at a longer wavelength so because it it falls in the longer wavelength that means towards the visible region so when the absorb the the molecule it absorb the light and some of the uh, it start emission some of the radiation start emission so then it is get measured in the form of longer wavelength and this longer wavelength they are comes up, they known as the fluorescence or they are known as the emission wavelength always remember that this fluorescence is not the property of all the molecules this is the property of those molecules who emit the light after absorbing the light and when they goes to the exciting excited level and then when they come back towards the ground level so they emit some radiation so this property this is not the property of all the molecules some molecules they show the fluorescence just like the aromatic compound however there is a, 
the hydrocycle compound they they they, they don't they don't show these uh, fluorescence. So aromatic compounds, vitamins, they show the fluorescence, and that's why the application part of this fluorescence is the estimation of the vitamins, just like the riboflavin. Now, so what is fluorescence and fluorimetry? Just see in a sequence wise what is this uh, fluorescence and how the phenomena occurs. So when a substance it absorbs the radiation and immediately emit the radiation after the radiation absorption and the substance which exhibit this phenomena of fluorescence they are called fluorescent and the study or determination of the fluorescence is known as the fluorometry. Now as I said that the emitted radiation they occur at the longer wavelength that means towards a lower energy than the exciting radiation. Always remember this point in the fluorimetry that there is an excitation radiation after ex absorption of uh, the radiation the molecule is excited the electrons in the molecule they excited from ground level to the excited level and thereafter when they come back towards the ground level so they emit some radiation. So if the exciting radiation is in the near ultraviolet rays the fluorescence it is possibly in the visible region of the spectrum because the visible it is having the longer wavelength. So when the exciting radiation it is near the ultraviolet rays so then it goes because the emitting radiation will be in the visible region right and if it is in the visible region so uh, then the, it is easily detectable by the eye. And the whole emitted radiation which is uh, actually a uh, number of different wavelengths so then it constitute a fluorescent spectrum just like the absorption spectrum in the UV and spectroscopy, visible spectroscopy. The same way in the fluorimetry, different wavelength, the emitted radiation of different wavelength, they constitute a fluorescence spectrum. More than a qualitative analysis, this is a quantitative analysis. And now in this fluorimetry, what are the basic or what are the foundation of showing the fluorescence? As I said, this is a phenomenon of showing the uh, of showing the emission of the radiation, and then we measure the emission. Now, what are the basic points which are behind it at the electronic level? So, whenever a molecule it is irradiated with light of appropriate frequency, actually it will absorb the light in about just ten to ten to twelve minus fifteen seconds, and when on absorbing the photo which is the discrete energy packets, one of the electron is excited towards the exciting uh, energy level and that goes to the next level, that is the excited singlet state. We will discuss these singlet state because there are three states, singlet state, double doublet state and triplet state. So we will discuss in the next slide what is this singlet, uh, singlet state, singlet ground state, singlet excited state, doublet ground state, doublet excited state, triplet ground state and then triplet excited state. We will discuss in the coming slide. So thereafter the electron will return to the ground state by releasing the excess of energy which is absorbed and it may be in the form of uh, heat or it may be in the form of radiation. So this release of energy to return back to the normal, this process is known as called the decay or deactivation or sometimes is called the relaxation. So when excess energy absorbed is released during the relaxation in the form of photon that is the radiations, such type of relaxation, relaxation is called the emission. And in the fluorimetry, the average lifetime of an electron in an excited state is only about 10 to the power minus 5 to 10 to the power minus 8 seconds, which is a little bit greater in the phosphorescence. So fluorescence and phosphorescence that's why they are different because the average lifetime of electron is less in the fluorometry, in the fluorescence and in phosphorescence the average lifetime, lifetime of electron is higher. Now you can see that what is the singlet, doublet and triplet state. So this singlet, doublet and triplet state they also are one most important point for differentiating the fluorescence and the phosphorescence. So as per the Pauli exclusion principle two electrons in an atom they it cannot have the same four quantum numbers and we know that as per the Pauli exclusion principle only two electrons can occupy each orbital 
and they must have the opposite spin and this opposite spin is known as the spin pairing and because of this spin pairing most of the molecules do not exhibit a magnetic field and if they do not exhibit a magnetic field they are known as diamagnetic like in diamagnetic if it is a diamagnetic molecule then the electrons they are not attracted or repelled by any electric field otherwise free radicals or the unpaired electrons if they are present then they are the paramagnetic why paramagnetic because if they contain the unpaired electrons they have a magnetic moment and because of that they attracted towards the magnetic field so what is this singlet doublet and triplet as you can see in the picture so there is a single singlet ground state singlet excited state and triplet excited state in one picture and the second one there is singlet where there is no unpaired electron in doublet one unpaired electron and in triplet there are two unpaired electrons so what is this singlet state so we can define this singlet state that when the all electrons spin they are paired in the molecular electronic state and the electronic energy level do not split even when the magnetic uh, magnetic field is applied to it so it do not split into energy level why in the doublet state because of an unpaired electron is there it gives two orientations when it when when it is exposed to a magnetic field why in the triplet state the electron it is promoted towards the excited state but with the same spin because all is depend on the spin you can see in the singlet excited state when one molecule one uh, electron it moves towards the higher state it has different spin one is on the positive spinning and the above one is the negative spinning while in the triple triplet excited state when it goes to the higher excited state but it is in the same spin so with the same spin it is actually the parallel orientation so by comparing these two pictures we can see that the singlet have no unpaired electron when it go excited so then the electron it having the different spinning order while in the triplet when the electron there are two un unpaired electrons because they are in the same spin when it one go up to higher excited level so then it will be the same spinning that means both are the same spinning the ground level electron and the excited level of electron while the, in the doublet there is only one pair of electron so when in the doublet when it goes into the higher excited state it will be the same as it was earlier and but it show very different energy system so that's why the singlet and the triplet excited state they are very relevant in the fluorescence and the phosphorescence and this singlet singlet state because singlet ground state to singlet excited state it is it works for the fluorescence and then triplet ground and triplet excited state it work for the phosphorescence however some of the molecule they jump into from the singlet to sing, singlet singlet to jump into the triplet excited state and that is known as the intercrossing system intercrossing system and this singlet doublet and triplet state it can be calculated with the equation of the multiplicity that is by 2s plus 1 where s is the total spin angular momentum that is the sum of all electron spin and based on this equation of multiplicity that is 2s plus 1 for the singlet it is 1 for the doublet it is 2 and for triplet uh, triplet it is 3 now next is electronic level and transition which take place during the fluorescence as well as for the phosphorescence so during this process some of the vibrational relaxation occurs there some internal conversation occurs then some photon emission occurs and thereafter energy transfers as you can see in the picture that as we know that the absorption or the absorption when it goes from ground level to excited level 
and in the excited level there are some vibrational relaxation occurs so because of this vibrational relaxation what what are these basically vibrational relaxation these are the transfer of surplus energy surplus energy from vibrationally excited species to the solvent molecule but this this process happens within a just very short time span about 10 to minus 15 seconds and the solvent molecule it return back in the low vibrational energy state from this electronically excited state so the molecule which are found in the single singlet excited state they lose the energy very easily because there is a collision with the surrounding molecule of the salt so because because singlet excited seem to lose energy very easily that's why the fluorescence works in the singlet singlet state now what is internal conversion this when the lower and upper electronic state of the excited singlet have same multiplicity i'm saying that when the lower and the upper electronic state in the electronic uh, in the uh, upper and lower electronic state of the excited singlet because there are two uh, levels one is upper excited singlet and second is the lower excited singlet so when the upper or the lower electronic state of this excited singlet they have same multiplicity that means 2s plus 1 so this phenomena actually is known as the internal conversion so without changing the multiplicity that is 2s plus 1 if they are the same so that means it shows the fluorescence now this photon emission which is photon emission it is it is the fluorescence actually so when the molecule in the singlet excited state as it is in the s1 s1 you can see in the s1 so from this singlet excited state come back to the ground state that is s0 they cause the emission of the photo which is known as the fluorescence and it takes place as you can see in the picture that is 10 to the minus 9 to 10 to the minus 6 second and if this excited state s1 it directly goes to convert into convert into the triplet state then it is known as it comes under the flow phosphorescence now see the energy transfer the energy which is transfer from the singlet state to the triplet state and it happen when the molecule come back to the ground state so when it come back to the ground state and it goes into the triplet state from singlet to triplet state then triplet excited state actually triplet excited state as you can see so this energy transfer is known as the intersystem crossing so this is how a molecule when it absorb the light it excited towards the it excited towards the higher energy level and from higher energy level because there are some vibrational relaxation is there and it go to the internal conversion because the multiplicity is the same and there it stay there for a period of 10 to the minus 9 to 10 to the minus 6 second and then when it come back towards the ground level it it showed emission of the photons and that is the fluorescence but in case if the molecule uh, transfer the energy from singlet to the triplet state and then from triplet state when it come back to the ground level so it shows the phosphorescence which is uh, for about 10 to the minus 4 to 10 seconds so that's why this phosphorescence basically is uh, very helpful during the chemical reactions and and it, it is visible it is visible by eye it can be visible by eye even the phosphor phosphorescence fluorescence also this phosphor this fluorescence is of uh, two or three types just like stroke fluorescence anti stroke fluorescence resonance fluorescence but these are not the point which we are going to discuss so now moving towards the factors affecting the fluorescence so the fluorescence it is affected by the intrinsic structure of the molecule so they are the intrinsic factors and some of the because of the environmental or the environment of the molecule so they are known as the extrinsic factors so what is this intrinsic factor which is because of the structure of the molecule so that is the first is the transition time you might remember that in the previous section we discuss about the transition types electronic transition types from sigma to sigma anti bonding from pi to pi anti bonding from n to pi anti bonding and n to sigma anti bonding so they, these transition type they affect the fluorescence so actually the radiation is produced in the transition produced by the transition 
they involve the pi to pi anti bonding excited state rather than n to pi bonding state so that's why the inherent life time which is associated with the pi to pi anti bonding it is shorter than the n to pi anti bonding so if the bond is pi to pi anti bonding it they have a shorter inherent life and that's why the uh, fluorescence is larger while the n to pi anti bonding it is uh, it is in a greater that is 10 to the minus 5 to 10 to the minus 7 second while it is for the pi to pi anti bonding it is about 10 to 10 to the minus 7 to 10 to the minus 9 second so this is shorter 10 to the minus 7 to 10 to the minus 9 and n to pi anti bonding they have a uh, inherent lifetime of 10 to the minus 5 to 10 to the minus 7 now next is the quantum efficiency this quantum efficiency or we say the quantum yield is basically is a ratio of the molecule that flow they show the fluorescence to the total number of molecules which are excited so a molecule must be if it is showing the unit for example is equal to 1 that is the fluorine however the more the molecules which do not show the fluorescence the quantum efficiency of those molecules is zero so it comes between 0 to 1 so fluorine which is a good to show the fluorescence because it has a one quantum yield now the structure so structure play a very very important role like the aromatic compounds or the compound which having the aromatic functional group i'm saying both aromatic compounds or compounds which show which having the aromatic functional group they have low energy transition level from pi to pi anti bonding and this low energy transition level of pi to pi anti bonding in the aromatic groups they show the most intense and most useful fluorescent behavior of the compound some of the aliphatic alicyclic or highly conjugate system they also show the fluorescence and if the molecule is unsubstituted aromatic compound so then it show the fluorescence in solution but there are some heterocyclic compounds and these heterocyclic compound having the lowest energy electronic transition level of n to pi bonding n to pi anti bonding on the aromatic compound they are under the transit low energy transition level of pi to pi anti bonding while the heterocyclic compound having the lowest energy electronic transition level of n to pi anti bonding and that's why they rapidly convert to the triplet state so rather than showing the fluorescence because they are rapidly convert to the triplet state so rather than showing the fluorescence they show the phosphorescence just like for example pyridine furan thiophene etc now as you can see that these are the the points these are shown in the green now these green points because when the fluorescence decrease this decrease in the fluorescence is known as the quenching so this quenching is the decrease in the fluorescence so another quenching part is the decrease uh, uh, part is that when the halogen substitution is there on the molecule because when the halogen is there on the molecule it increase the atom uh, atomic number because heavy atom affect the this inter system crossing and that's why it these halogens they also decrease the fluorescence even the substitution of the carboxylic or carbonyl group they also decrease the fluorescence again due to the n to pi anti bonding transition some of the electron donating group where they increase the fluorescence intensity just like the oh nh2 and some of the electron withdrawing group they decrease the intensity so if they decrease the in intensity again they are playing a role in the quenching so those molecules those functional group which are electron donating groups they increase the fluorescence and these halogens carbonyl group carboxylic group aldehyde group because they are the electron withdrawing group they decrease the fluorescence and that's why they come they cause the quenching of the molecule but there are some groups which do not ha have any effect on the fluorescence just like the quaternary ammonia ion or the alkyl groups 
Now next is the structure rigidity. So the fluorescence from a molecule actually sometime it observed, it has been observed that fluorescence increase when the structure rigidity increase, just like the complex formation. It is also observed that if there is a, some transition from non-planar molecule, if the molecule is non-planar and the transition occurs to similar but more planar and rigid molecule, then it increase the quantum yield of the fluorescence. And even the complexation also result in the increase in the fluorescence. One of the example is just like uh, the 8 hydroxy quinolone. This quinolone has a less, free, uh, less fluorescence, but, but when there is a zinc complex of this 8 hydroxy quinolone, then the fluorescence increase. Now the next is the extrinsic factor. And the first extrinsic factor, that means the environmental factor, is the light source. So we know that we have a light source with, from which the light comes and thereafter it goes to a monochromator. Always remember that when the fluorimetry is, we are doing the fluorimetry, so this, the emission is only taking place for a small fraction of time. So that's why a very precise wavelength is required to study this fluorimetry or the fluorescence. So that's why sometimes people use the mercury arc lamp, which is there in the UV also. So, but that mercury arc lamp must be very satis um, give some satisfactory result. But most of the time it do not give the satisfactory result because it produce some of the light which is limited number of the variants. Some limited number of the variants. Also, some other types of uh, the lamps like the deuterium lamp, quartz iodine lamp, source they have also have a low intensity. So that's why for the, from these lamps, the light source, from these light source, the fluorescent intensity is also very low. So that's why for that, for this, for the purpose of the fluorescence, the fluorimeter use a high pressure xenon arc lamp, high pressure xenon arc lamp, which produce a high intensity of the light from 200 nanometer to 1000 nanometer. Next is the concentration. So, with the, with the equation of F is equal to Kc, that is the fluorescence radiation, it is proportional to the radiant power of excitation B that is absorbed by the system. So, we can say that this F is directly proportional to the concentration. K is here is the constant. So, with increase in the concentration of the fluorescence species, the fluorescence will increase linearly. But always remember, that this proportionality that is directly proportional, uh, F is directly proportional to concentration. This is only for, this is true for the dilute solution only. For the concentrated solution, the fluorescence radiation do not directly proportional to the concentration. Temperature also play important role because the quantum efficiency of the fluorescence, it decreases with increase in the temperature. Then the solvent effect, sometimes we use the Polar, polar solvent, sometimes we use the non-polar solvents. So, for example, if we increase the polarity of the solvent, that means we are choosing a polar solvent, so both the absorption and the emission band, they undergo the bathochromic shift. Bathochromic shift, that is the red shift, that means towards a longer wave. This process also decreases if we take a solvent which contain heavy atoms, less like carbon tetrabromide or ethyl iodide, so fluorescence decreases with these heavy containing, uh, uh, solvent containing heavy atoms. Now the effect of pH. So the fluorescence of the acidic or the basic compound, they are pH dependent. For example, the fluorescence of phenolic form of 1 naphthol 4 sulfonic acid, it is not detectable by eye. The phenolic form of 1 naphthol 4 sulfonic acid not detectable by eye. But when it is converted to the phenolate ion by addition of a base, the emission shift to a visible wave and the fluorescence is shown. Another example just like uh, 7 hydroxy cowmeric. It do not show the fluorescence at 3, 4 and 5 pH, but when the pH is below 2.2, 2, 
This 5-7 hydroxy covalent it exhibit a it gives a very intense blue or blue green fluorescence. So we can say that change in the pH it also result in change in the emission spectrum and that show the fluorescence. Now instrumentation part of the that is the fluorine meter. So as with the atomic emission spectroscopy because this is a molecular emission spectroscopy that is fluorimetry. So it is same as the atomic emission spectroscopy. So likewise in the atomic emission spectroscopy which we will learn in the coming classes. So there is a radiation source and as I said that most fluorescence spectrometer or these fluorimetry meter they use a high pressure xenon arc lamp because this uh, high pressure xenon arc lamp it uh, produce the it produce a very useful high intensity light from 200 nanometer to 1000 nanometer. Again, I remind you that it just the fluorescence it depend on the molecular and the chemical environment and most importantly the molecular and molecular, it depend on the molecular structure whether the substance will show the fluorescence or will not show the fluorescence. Every compound do not show the fluorescence. Next is the filter and these filter they can be the monochromator which is a very uh, essential part in the atomic emission spectrometry in the same way they are used in the fluorimetry and if they are not of good quality these monochromators then the efficiency because the fluorescence is, is a very sensitive because uh, very low amount of uh, less amount of the radiations comes out so if it is not too much it's not good sensitivity so that means that means it will not uh, work efficiently. Second is the detector. So the most common of the detector it is the photomultiplier tube just like in the same det detector which is in the UV visible spectroscopy or the spectrophotometer. The photomultiplier tube it is used for the detection of the even the photo beam signals and because also this photomultiplier tube that is PMT it is very highly sensitive even for UV visible E near infrared regions uh, of uh, the electromagnetic radiations. Next is the amplifier. So this amplifier it amplifies the signal uh, which is received from the detector and then it transfer to a readout device and this readout device actually display the spectrum and uh, which is in the form of sometimes digital voltmeter or galvanometer, potentiometer and it may be a computer. So this is the uh, picture which shows the fluorimeter and this is the process on the left hand side that shows that how the source it comes uh, how it shows the radiations the radiation goes through the slit and then monochromator it goes to sample and again there is a monochromator and finally it goes to detector and amplifier. Now next is the application of this fluorimeter. So this fluorimeter it is used for determination of number of inorganic ions and it is widely used in the field of pharmaceuticals but again the, those only product those chemicals only which shows the fluorescence which emit the radiations. It also is helpful in the estimation of metals in the biological field and estimation of the vitamins just like the ribofilin. As you can see here in the picture uh, in the structure of the molecule they are anthracene which shows a blue fluorescence and the aminacrine which is a green which shows a greenish blue fluorescence and riboflavin shows the yellowish green fluorescence. This quinine uh, shows the blue fluorescence. So now at last, on concluding this lecture, the fluorescence is shown by the molecules when the molecule absorbs the light or the radiation. It goes from low level, uh, ground level to the excited level and then from excited level when it comes back to the ground level, ground level then it emits some of the radiation. These emissions they are observed as a fluorescence. If these radiation which are coming on the uh, emission which are coming off coming from the excited to ground level, if they are from singlet singlet to singlet, so they show the fluorescence. And if they are from singlet and intercross to the triplet state, then they show the phosphorescence. So this is how this fluorimetry works and this is about all the fluorescence. Thank you.